So I'm sure you probably clicked on the title because you were probably thinking I hate trick stars. <laughs> What's up you guys? Avery here and uh, it's been a while since I've actually been able to sit down and playtest Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, I've still been keeping up with the game of course. YCS Atlanta was crazy. My boy Jeremy Mitchell, he won the event. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I am a local player to Jacksonville, Florida. I played against Jeremy before. He's a fantastic player. I always enjoy playing against him the few times that I have. Uh, he's not one of those egotistical players. He's not someone that just has a stick up his ass trying to win every event. He is a genuine, really cool, down-to-earth player. And uh, he's he's just super cool, super cool. So, Jeremy, if somehow you happen to see this, uh, good job, brother. Um, you deserve that win. <laughs> you've been playing Pendulums for months now, probably at least over a year, because I think you've been playing it since Pepe format. But uh, anyway, regardless of that, YCS Pokemon is also insane. Of course, World Chalice won. Uh, and I'm sure you're wondering, what have you been doing, Avery? You haven't been posting in over a month. What's been going on? Well, I've been adjusting my Trickstar build. Um, I may or may not be going to National since it's all the way in Texas, but regardless, I still want to perfect my build in case I do end up going. And the reason why the title of this video is I Hate Trickstars is because I hate these other people's builds. I absolutely despise them. Now, I'm not saying I hate the players that built these decks and topped with them at Boca and Atlanta, respectively. Um, I'm just saying that they they don't fit my playstyle. And this also brings up a bigger discussion as a whole about playtesting decks before you take them to an event and not just net decking the night before. That's number one. And number two, also uh, making sure that the deck build is right for you. Just earlier today, I was playtesting this Trickstar build, and I just want to see if I can happen to get... I'm going to do a few shuffles here to see if I can get a good hand example. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Now, this hand, uh, let's see, we would use Light Stage to get the Lycoris, we would use Candina. Okay, yeah, this is actually a perfect example of a hand that I just think is booty. I was playing earlier today, and I was playing against Ancient Gears, and I basically opened up a hand that was utter garbage. I opened up, uh, like... Basically, Candina, Droll, Candina, Droll, and Lockbird, and Reincarnation. Uh, I summoned the Candina, or, or no, I didn't even open up Reincarnation. I summoned Candina, searched for the Reincarnation, set a couple cards, told my opponent to go. He draws. I activate Reincarnation. I have a Light Stage, a Forbidden Chalice, and a uh, Solemn Strike set. He ends up using Twin Twisters to pop my Light Stage and my... Uh, not not the Solemn Strike. He ends up popping my other face down card. It, it wasn't the Solemn Strike. Whatever I just said, I just completely lost my train of thought. Um, and so I end up using Reincarnation. He loses four cards. He goes to play Terraforming. I then use Droll and Lotbird. Granted, I should use Droll and Lotbird uh, upon the resolution of the Reincarnation. But the point that I'm getting at is that he ended up beating me two turns later because I pretty much ran out of steam. I ran out of resources, and granted, you can chalk it up to the fact that maybe I'm not used to the build, I'm not used to the deck, whatever the case may be. However, at the same time, the reason why that I say that this brings up a bigger discussion about playtesting decks before you go into an event is because you don't want to just net deck something the night before and assume, oh, it's just Pendulum Magicians, I'll be able to do well on top of it. Nah, Pimp, that's not how this works because I've done that before, and that's not how it works at all. I have playtested decks but while net decking them and find that I absolutely just hate builds like this build for example I absolutely hate this Trickstar build besides Eater of Millions because of the fact that it, to me just the way that I play Trickstars I run out of steam too quick I don't have any good backup plans I don't have a lot of good outs you know if you notice my Trickstar build if you go back and look at my deck profile at the beginning of this format you will see I run a lot of trap cards um, I was playing two Ash Blossoms before. I would probably up that to three. Um, another way that my build differs, of course, is that I play three Honest, and I was actually playing one Strike, one Warning, and one Solemn Judgment, along with uh, three Blazing Mirror Force. So that right there shows you that my build is a much more slow control variant with the explosive plays of, for example, Chain Summoning. I don't really like Pot of Desires in my build in particular because of the fact that I much rather have all the resources in my deck. Yes, Desires gets rid of the cards that you technically weren't going to draw anyway. I understand that. I understand why it's a good card. I also understand why people say it's a bad card because it's a neg nine, especially if you get Ash Blossom. If you get Ash Blossom, it sucks. You activate Pot of Duality, opponent Ash Blossoms you, it sucks. Not as bad as losing uh, 10 cards 
or if you want to count the desires in 11, then that can kind of be where builds will differ. Now, the person that topped with this build, this is the YCS Vocum. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is a Trickstar Top 8 build. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. And I'm not saying that the player is bad, as I just mentioned. All I'm saying is that his particular play style will go with his particular build. You know, may, for all I know, the guy that topped Trickstars uh, and YCS Vocum, he may have seen my build. He may have seen I was playing three Honest and, you know, a Strike, a Warning, and a Judgment, and three Blazing. He may have said, nah, that's that's too slow, that's too conservative. I'm going to go with three Scapegoat. Now, I have really grown to like Scapegoat, and I am still trying to fit it into my particular build. And I do like the idea of Forbidden Chalice because it is not only a card that stops the opponent like a Veiler does, but if they do happen to pop it before you can be able to negate one of their effects, then you can be able to activate it and bump up your Candina to 2200. You can bump up your Lily Bell to 9, 10, 11, 1200. You can bump up your Lycoris to 18, which overall is not bad. And Trickstar is also a deck in general where you can run a lot of hand traps. You know, three Ash, three Droll, three Ghost Ogre. That's nine right there if we're not counting Honest. I also like the fact that he threw in Eater of Millions. However, to show the comparison, I don't like that he's playing Desires. I'm just using that as an example to show how my playstyle differs from his playstyle. That's all I'm doing. Now, as for his extra deck, he did want to go more combo heavy, of course, with Scapegoat, Misty's Radiant Link, Spider, uh, etc., etc. Uh, I threw in Evenly Matched into the side deck just because I feel that Evenly Matched is a very good card. I feel like it needs to be played in everything. If I had three Evenly Matched, I would be playing it in Trickstar. I've also been testing the YCS Atlanta Trickstar build that topped eight there. Now, that person was only playing three Reincarnation, and uh, I don't have the build off the top of my head. Let me actually look that up right quick. All right, you guys, I'm back. Shout out to mcole 40 I'm using uh, his video just to kind of show the build. But if you look at his build, clearly he's got more things going on than the the other build does he's also playing two desires however he's going with judgment strike and uh torrential tribute now this may have been a different actually no 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 this was the right build i'm sorry i think i was thinking about a different build that only played three reincarnation but this guy he's going on a little bit more the defensive route like i was he's playing a judgment a strike and instead of a warning he's playing a torrential it's at three why not then he's playing two cosmic cyclone which is what i was playing beforehand and again he's still playing the three scapegoat the two eater millions but instead of forbidden chalice he is playing effect bailer and two honest instead so you can notice here where the play styles kind of differ right this guy wanted to to focus more on being able to have outs to his opponent's cards. He wanted to have cards like Cosmic Cyclone to eliminate the back row so he wouldn't have to worry about it. He's running a card like Effect Veil that can be able to stop effects so that he doesn't have to run a third Ghost Ogre. He can have a little bit of the best of both worlds while also playing two Honest. He likes Honest. This person may not have liked Honest as much or felt that it was more dead. This person may have also felt that instead of playing uh, Judgment and Torrential and wasting your life points, he felt that maybe three strike was all he needed for this event. Keep in mind too that European players seem to play different decks and uh, I like how mcole 40 mentioned this because I was going to mention this in a video but never really got around to it. OCG players and TCG players tend to play very different decks. You know we see that OCG doesn't really focus on a lot of FTKs and stuff like that. They don't really like those type of decks whereas the TCG we love decks like that right? Like your boy here was playing self-destruct button. Look back at my old videos and you'll see where I was playing self-destruct button like every single day on my channel and I was able to get a good base of subscribers from that. I ended up getting to like just over 400 subscribers uh, on my channel before I posted to Capital G's channel, which really shot me up. And, you know, OCG, they may have self-destruct one, but they don't really play it. They don't think about cards like that. That's not really what the, uh, their play style is like, what their meta is like. And so when it comes overall to play testing and building your decks and net decking, I personally think it is great to net deck. I don't see anything wrong with it. It is how I became better as a player overall throughout my career playing this game. I started playing Really in 2008 is when I went to my first local, because I, I consider when that's when I really started getting into the game. 2008, I started net decking. I learned about it through YouTube. I started net decking card for cards, started playing them, and that's usually what I would run with. Then once I got more experience, I ended up building decks uh, on my own. I would net deck and make changes accordingly. For example, with this deck, I net deck this Trickstar deck. Absolutely hated. I feel like it just... If you're not able to just stomp your opponent down with Link Monsters or be able to get them down with the Droll and Lock combo, I feel like that you're just going to run out of resources through my testing and through testing uh, hands and looking at examples of what I would, how I would play things out. Again, this player might play out the hands differently. For example, just to do one quick shuffle, 
uh, three, four, five. The way that I play this hand may be different compared to how the person that top Bochum would play it, or he may have always had opted to go second. I didn't watch his IRL duck profile from Lithium. I just watched Robbie's video, but the guy may have always opted to go second, which if that is the case, that's very good because two draws is pretty dead unless the opponent is playing a heavy search deck like Spiral or Pendulum Magician or whatever the case may be. If he's going second, boom, terraforming, light stage, get you Candina, summon Candina, reincarnation, desires for 10, hopefully draw two. If he's going first, he's just going to desires right off the bat because this hand is trash. He's going to go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's going to hit the honest and the scapegoat and still not be in really that good of a position, in my opinion. That's how I would play. He might be conservative and just, you know, pass turn and just try and save out with the draw and lock bird. So let me know what you guys think overall. This is a discussion that I wanted to get out to you guys just to kind of understand what, minds, what my mindset is as a player and maybe something that you can be able to uh, tap into uh, with your own playtesting or your own you know, playing of this game in general. Uh, personally, overall, though, I will say I hate this Bokum build. Uh, I've tested very little with the Atlanta build. I think I'm going to probably hate that build, too. I'm probably just going to go back to my build of playing three Blazing and a Strike, a Judgment, and a Warning, just because that's what I'm comfortable with. I still want to fit in two Eater of Millions. Uh, I think the card is very, very good. I really like the concept of Eater of Millions being able to gain attack points with banished cards, especially if you combine that with Trickstar Reincarnation. It's like a match made in heaven. Maybe there could even be some room for BLS, although I feel like that's maybe a little bit of a stretch just because everything in here is light. And even just looking at this build from the get-go, again, showing how I look at things as from my... Um, player standpoint, looking from the outside in and testing and how I play Trick Stars personally, I still feel like you need three Honest. Like, honestly, no pun intended, I would take out the two Eater of Millions and throw in Triple Honest and figure out some other way to put in two Eater of Millions, just because I feel like Honest is just so good. You have so much OTK potential. And honestly, I would take out the two Forbidden Chalices and throw in like maybe a couple other trap cards or two cosmic cyclones because I want to have that back row removal. This guy didn't really need the back row removal. And you got to keep in mind too, I don't have his side deck here in front of me. If I did, that might even be a different story. I didn't really bother to copy the side deck because I wanted to focus on the main deck alone. I usually don't copy people's side decks unless I see good tech choices in there for the format. So let me know what you guys think. I uh, really wanted to put out a video for you guys. I've been so busy with school. Thank you guys for watching as always and subscribe if you've not already.